Yeah, when you're ready. When I'm ready. Okay. Right, this is a uh, short demonstration video on how to uh, configure a uh, DISCU um, for interpretation and then subsequently configure the interpreter consoles. Uh, first of all, what we need to do is wire it up. So what we've done is we've got the CU plugged into the mains. Then we have a single uh, Cat5 cable, Cat6 cable coming out from the CU. And we have that then running to a junction box. The junction box is then, um, it daisy chains onto the next junction box and to the next junction box. So there's one junction box in each interpreter booth. And then from the, inter then the output of the junction box then goes to each interpreter console. The reason for using the junction boxes is that should we need to replace uh, an interpreter console, we can do so without disrupting the other interpreter console in the booth and also the subsequent uh, booths connected uh, via junction boxes. So if I plug that back in again. So once you've done that, got that all set up, then we switch on the CU. Now the CU will take a, a few moments to boot up and you'll see some flashing lights on the interpreter consoles and microphones that you have connected to the system. And uh, what we've got to do is once the system has booted up, we will configure the number of languages and the number of booths that, uh, that is on the system. The display will change to its menu settings at the moment. At the moment you can see it's undergoing unit registration. Once it's finished, that display will change. So we wait a few, and that can take anything up to a couple of minutes. So you can go and make a cup of tea. <laughs> We'll edit this bit out. <laughs> there we go. Right, okay, so it's, we've now gone to the uh, menu display. And we have audio control, delegate setup, interpreter setup, ambient microphone, units info, RS232 setup, configuration, license information, firmware information, and then we're back to audio control. So what we need to do today, we're doing interpreter setup. So we push the button to the side of interpreter setup and we have number of interpreter channels. So we select that. We've got, you can have up to 32 on the system. Um, it's showing three at the moment, <coughs> but I want to actually only have two. So I enter that again, that then highlights that. So I can then adjust that down to two and then we enter that, that's then two languages. We're going to be setting it up today for English and Arabic, just for the fun of it. So we then go back to menu and then we have language setup. So we select language setup, language setup. So channel one is already set to English. I want to reset channel two. So we select channel two and we then scroll through the preset languages on the system and we want to set it to Arabic today. So we keep on going Arabic and we enter that. Okay, menu button again to go back. Booth setup, booth one, set to channel one, booth two, set to channel two. Now there's a bit of a, a, a concept that you have to get your head around in this system in so far as that both English and Arabic will be supplied by the same booth because when English has been spoken, the booth will output Arabic, but when Arabic has been spoken on the floor, that same booth will output the English. So in actual fact, booth one does not exist. You actually only start with booth two. Okay, so that being said, we now go back to our menu. Um, auto floor, 
auto floor is on. Auto floor means that when the interpreter switches off their microphone, the, the floor language automatically gets broadcast on their channel. So that's fine. Menu, interpreter lock, that just prevents one interpreter from locking out another. Channel display, so we can set the channel to display either the language or just a channel number. So you can just do one, two, three, or English, Arabic, French. So we want to do language today. So go back to menu, menu, down again, and then we're back to interpreter channels. Right, so we can go back to the main, the main menu. Once you've actually done your setup in this way, it's best to then go to configuration select configuration and save this configuration and press enter because if you don't do that when you switch the system off it will go back to the original settings which may not be the ones that you require so we're saving that now okay that's done back to the main menu right lovely now then once we've done that we now actually have to program the interpreter consoles Unprogrammed interpreter consoles come up with this message here, Danish Interpretation Systems. And what we need to do to reprogram the console, we need to press B and B. So B and B, as though you're going to spend the night somewhere. Okay, now then, first comes up with your main menu here. You've got booth desk number, B language and B mode, version, communication status. If you scroll down, you then got backlight, AB switch, and mic activity beep. So we'll start off with booth desk number. So that works in the same way as the CU. You press the line to the side of it. This is booth one, English OK, desk number one, OK, um, which, is, uh, which is fine on this instance. But as I say, English booth doesn't really exist because all booths actually contribute to the English channel. So what I will do is I will change this to the um, to the uh, Arabic booth. So to do that, I then select down, oops, up arrow. So it's now the Arabic booth. And we can now OK that. B language mode. Well, in actual fact, the B language is going to be English. So I'll do that. And we'll OK that. The other thing that we want to do is select the backlight because it's always useful for the backlight to be on. So we select on, OK, and the backlight comes on. A, B switch with mic on. We want that to be on as well. That basically allows the interpreter to change channels without actually having to switch off their microphone, which is very useful for when you're doing fast flowing communication in full discussion mode. Basically means there's no um, breaks in interpretation. Okay, so let me OK that. So that is now all OK. And then we press B and B again to get back to the uh, interpreter console. So here we have now English is on the B channel, Arabic is on the A channel, and then here we have your, your relays. Um, these relays won't be used in a system of this size. This is more for when you have uh, larger systems. But what we do on a system of this size is we will automatically set these all to be uh, English uh, because to save anybody accidentally pressing a button and then thinking, oh, where's my sound gone? So all those are set to English and then we go back to the floor language as well. Then we have to do the same on this console. So just to go through that process again, it's B and B booth desk number, it automatically sends what the last one was set to, so it has copied that system over and just made itself desk number two. So we OK that. Um, B language, we want to set to uh, English, so we OK that. And then we want to go down to the backlight, so we switch the backlight on, OK, and A, B switch on, OK. That done, B and B. Then we move these to English to prevent finger trouble from giving us any issues. Okay, and then back to floor. Once you've got your interpreter console set up, again, it's best to save the configuration on the CU. So if you go back to the CU, 
and we go to menu configuration save configuration enter and then that saves your config all done and dusted so that means now I put on my interpreter headphones I switch on my microphone I can see that the Arabic uh, channel is occupied I am speaking in Arabic although it may sound like English uh, my colleague can take over directly if I stutter and stammer or start coughing for some reason um, I can take it back and at the push of a button I can then switch my output to the English channel without my microphone coming off and then back to Arabic then we have the mute button here that mutes the microphone for the interpreter so if they want to have a drink of water question their colleague have a cough or do something else like that without actually releasing the output channel then they can do so and they can relay off anybody they want to hear and then that's back to floor volume control bass treble if you look at the console you'll see that the right the left hand side is listening and the sorry the left hand side is listening right hand side is their language transmission and their microphone control so that said, that should be that on interpretation and how to configure interpreter consoles with the DISCU. Thank you for listening.